Action Pack Tutorial. I am your host, Freddy67. Today we will be talking about night lighting. How to implement it in Max, get it from Max into R Factor, and a few bits and bobs about how exactly I do it for my ovals. Let's get started. I'm going to assume you already have your glows in place. Uh, I, I honestly uh, don't really make too many of my glows. I just use default ISI. That gets the job done. Uh, obviously you can make custom glows, but uh, to me a glow is a glow. And unless it's a special type of lighting, uh, most of the time a, the basic default uh, glow works. Now one quick note, not a little. How I build my tracks most of the time, I use one, one GMT for the track, one for the infield, and so on. A GMT can only accept, from my understanding, four light sources. So if your mod, if this is a road course and the cars have lights, I'm not exactly sure how that works because I've never built a road course. For oval's sake, if your track is one GMT, well, you have to take an effect that you can only use four light sources on that track unless you cut the track up. If you cut this track in half, this half can take four, this half can take four. You have to be careful when you apply the lighting that it doesn't bleed over into the other, because then you'll have a chunk of, of track that might not be lit properly. So let's get started on how to apply the lights. Up to the top right in your Create tab, see lights, select that, go to Standard. Omni, and then we'll select right in the middle of the track. What I tend to do is roughly put the lights around the height of the glows so it gets a somewhat realistic throw. But our issue is since we can only have four light sources per GMT, I usually position the lighting to where it looks like the whole track is lit. Because if we put a light source on each one of these lights, uh, NASA's computers will come to a crawl. I could be wrong, it could be the way I'm doing it, but for whatever reason, the way I make tracks, this is the only way I can do it. So what I end up doing is chunking together the GMTs of the, the glows. The, the straightaway will be one GMT, the corner will be one, the other straight will be one. Uh, you could pretty much do it however you want, depending on the size of your track, your layout, etc. For this example, I usually use this st uh, straight away will be one. So I will then position this light, this glow here. Oh, that's. I'll usually center it and then position it a little farther away because. If you use the X, Y, Z coordinate of the light glow, it'll put it right here. You don't want that. You want it to make it look like it's you know projecting the light outwards. So I will usually put it in this neighborhood. So now we have our light roughly the same height, pushed forward a little bit. Now let's go to the settings. Multiplier here is your default intensity of the light. Uh, you'll see that in the scene file. I'm going to click show. I was messing with it before, so it's already selected. I'm going to click show. And that'll give you an idea of how much throw distance we're using right now. Go here, change it to 20 or 100 you'll have an idea of what you're messing with. So for right now, we'll just use 50. And we'll leave the intensity at 1 for now. So now that we have it night light of 3, let's also use that 50 row. And then just like exporting a GMT, just go ahead and do mesh. Pull up our test scene file and you will see that we have our 1.0 intensity, our 50 meter range, nightlight 03. What I'll do is just copy that to my scene file. Hit 
pasted it, save. And I'll use the Gmotor scene for this example. See, I turn the lights off, but when I turn it on, see there's our one light attached to these glow and you'll see how far it expands out. Now the catch is, is once you add say three more lights then you can start playing with how wide of a range you're dealing with. Uh, and it also depends on the track. It's if you know, Some tracks have chunks of you know maybe mid corner where it's not lit properly. You know, there might be not enough lighting and so forth. But what I tend to do is I'll put four in, get them set up, and then I start messing with the range to kind of get the whole track covered. I might lower the intensity a little bit so it's not blatantly obvious uh, what I'm doing. Do this three more times and you will have the base of your track set up with lighting. All right, so that's just quick examples purposes. Since we like this light, then just select it. Shift and drag it here. Two, but let's double check. All right, it is O2, and I'll go two. One there. there. One. I'm just going to assume this other one's O3. The track's nice and lit up. Oh. Sorry. Four, okay. Lights. Sport them out. about it. Now you can at least see there's three lights and what I would probably start from here is then just up the range. At this point you really don't need to re-export out of max. I mean, you can by met overlapping the rings a little bit more. But I personally probably would just then go in and put in the scene file 75 for each one and then going back in to viewer or in game and then seeing what happens. Uh, that's pretty much the best option here. Just to cover these dark areas right here, uh, usually that's all it takes. Uh, if you're happy with the night lighting, then go in game, double check it. Pretty much, uh, that's all it is for night lights. They're very simple to do, and it's just uh, time consuming because if you have to deal with colors or you have to have specific areas lit up properly and to make it somewhat realistic. See, there's definitely where the glows are, it's centered, but if you widen the range a little bit, it kind of takes care of that. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them here on YouTube or over on my forum at nsrs.jellcentral.com. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.